guys looking back to the river being in the costumes, keeping it real. I'm Cody. I'm Terrence. And I'm Tripp. We got Bird Tripp with us today. He's going to chime in. Uh, thank y'all for watching the last episode. It was about a month ago. Been a little busy. All of us get together and come with this one. But last episode, we talked about seasons. And strangely enough, me and Bird Tans both hit a little funk after that episode. And, uh, which brings us to this episode today. We're going to call it Back to the Basics. Pretty much, it's going to be a short episode about us putting too much on ourselves sometimes. As Christians, as just human beings in general, we put so much on our plate and put so much pressure on ourselves. And sometimes God has to pull us back in because we're trying to do too much. So then you take a little bit off your plate and then you feel like you're not doing as much. We're going to talk about finding that happy medium there. So uh, for me, I've been putting a lot on myself and uh, in my walk lately, trying to do too much, uh, thinking that I had to be this or have to do this or, or be a certain way or be doing teaching or something. And I'm really just putting so much on myself and I get disappointed when I don't deliver how I want to. But it, in that, I'm forgetting about one of the biggest things, and that is not about me. Right. And Brother G. Elders preached a couple weeks ago about how the New Testament, Paul's letter specifically, is to show us how to stay safe. And really, you know, it just, it doesn't say that we have to be anything other than just living Christians who live by God's way and take in His mercy and His grace and just live by the way that the book tells us to. Right. And then the preaching, the teaching, all of that will come after, come and grow. Uh, I think we put too much on ourselves. I mean, we get so, we get a failure in us, and we don't deliver how we feel like we're supposed to. Maybe we do a Bible study, or just haven't been feeling anything, and we know that it's faith over feeling. But sometimes when you don't have that feeling in a while, it's hard to keep going get a pump and just it it really is because I know for myself sometimes when I get in them situations where I'm not feeling God and I'm thinking like and maybe I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do maybe if maybe if I would have read more or maybe if I would have prayed more or maybe if I would have did this more maybe I would have felt God more but in all reality it's not a it's like you said, it's not about feelings because feelings can over, I think it can deceive you in some kind of ways. You know, feelings ain't, it's, I don't think we should always walk in this life about feelings. It's not based what, on feelings. No. Right. I think it's about what you know God's doing in your life, where he's trying to take you to, what he's really wanting you to do. You know, you're reading and you're praying and you're fasting and everything. That's very important. That's more important than out here trying to live like other folks. That's walking a Christian life. Like for me, sometimes I Christian watch. I watch other folks. I'm like, man, I should be up there on the platform. Or, man, why, why, I'm, why every time I do a Bible study, it's not going right? Why? I'm always asking why, 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 why. But in all reality, it's I'm not doing nothing wrong. Maybe God's like showing me like there's going to be times where you have things that you're doing in your life that's you you have no control in nothing. It's all Him. If you do a Bible study, it ain't up to you for that person to be the best person that you set them out to be. Yeah. It's all it's their choice to do what they want to do, and. I know for me, I deal with that a lot because I'm like, well, what did I do wrong? When in, in all reality, it's, it has nothing to do with me. That's between them and God because I did what God wanted me to do. I shared the word with them like I was supposed to. 
it's up to them if they do anything else. But just like the missionary said that visited here a while back, uh, the Lord didn't call us to heal. He called us to pray. Right. He didn't call us. And that, that goes with everything. I spoke about it Sunday. Healing is, there's miracles, signs and wonders, and physical but healing is giving a Bible study and somebody's heart being healed. Right. Then receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, being baptized, getting on this walk with God. That's a healing that takes place. So God didn't call me to do that. I'm not the one that does it. Like you said, it's all about God. Right. Um, and then we, I feel like that when we do them things, we expect it, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. It's faith. We expect the Lord to do what he said he was going to do. Right. But when it doesn't happen sometimes, we put the blame on ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and, and rightfully so and a part of it. Me and you talked about this the other night. There's a small part. You've got to assess yourself. If you do give a Bible study and it don't work out, you do got to look at yourself and say, hey, what could I have done better? Right. But on the other hand, you've got to think, hey, I did what the Lord wanted me to do. And maybe you prayed about it and he said, you did it exactly the way you wanted, I wanted you to do it. That's in God's hands. Right. Uh, maybe that person, maybe that's just the seed that's going to be planted and 10 years later it's going to take place. That's, none, of that, none of the outcome is up to us. It's all to God. We just got to keep doing them things, even when we don't feel strong, when we don't feel that it's working. You know, it don't matter. It ain't a feeling. It's we just got to do it. We're not the manufacturing business. No. Right. Uh, That's right. Brother Tripp's talked to me uh, a couple weeks ago about this, and I was telling him how sometimes, like I said, we put so much on ourselves, and then other times we feel like. Maybe we put that we we get that we're putting too much on ourselves, so we calm down and we just then in our mind we feel like we're not doing enough, and then that gets us down. Yeah, it gets us in the funk. But what if the enemy is just making us feel this way? The enemy is just giving us these problems and these troubles in our mind because he knows what's going to happen, what we're capable of doing when we have the right mindset right attitude, the right spirit and everything. I find so much that whenever I go through a funk or struggle season that I shut off. I base so much off my emotion. Mm -hmm. And I hate that I do that. I'm trying to work on that. But uh, I, if I'm mad or if I'm upset, sad, I can't help but show it. I have no other way to, to process it. I'm going to show it. Right. And when that is affecting my worship, or affecting mm -hmm. my prayer life, or affecting my reading, <clears throat> then then that's a problem because I have to look and do a self inventory of myself, of what's right. right, what's wrong with me, and then set the emotions aside. Brother Jesus told me on more than one occasion to throw my feelings away and keep the faith, and it's hard to do it sometimes, and we lose track of that. If we can even know it, we'll still be doing it because it's our flesh that we're giving into our emotion, and it's just trying to keep in mind in our spirit that when we're going through that we have to think back to people in the Bible like, that went through the same thing. Jesus walked this earth. He had faced every temptation that we face. Right. But the difference between him and us is he was God manifest in flesh. He was perfect. Right. We are not. Right. We uh we can learn from even other normal people in the Bible too. Yeah. Like uh look at poor Job or yeah. look at Joseph. I'm sure he wasn't feeling too good. You know, the Lord gave him a dream, so he knew yeah. this was what's going to happen. And he's sitting in a pit, and he's sitting in a jail. And I'm sure he wasn't feeling too good, like, hey, Lord, you can fix this any time yeah. now. You know, he was probably feeling pretty low, and like, man, I'm in a funk. I ain't feeling nothing. I'm just here. I, I don't know if my life has any meaning. Maybe, I, maybe my dream was not true. You know, he could have thought a lot of things, but uh, he kept... It, every single process was the Lord just working it. And if it didn't go that way, the outcome wouldn't have been the way it was. Right. His brothers ended up crying and they rejoiced. And man, I, when I read that story, I can just feel the love that was in right. that building then. Whenever the brothers seen that it was him, they cried. And, I mean, it had been years since they'd seen each other. Right. And that's all the Lord. It is. And there was, pro you know, he had to get that stuff out of him to get him to that spot. That's you right. know. And that's all, you know, that's all a season is, is God showing you, hey, this is what's in you that's holding you back from where I need you to be. You know, I know I criticize myself a lot when I'm not doing this, when I'm not reading like I'm supposed to. You know, I'm like, man, 
I sometimes question my faith sometimes because I'm so far deep in the nitpicking myself. Then I start questioning myself about what I'm doing for God. Am I doing anything? Is, is God even working in me? You know, when in all reality he is. Because I wouldn't be doing none of the things that I'm doing if it wasn't for God. You know. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's important to pray, important to read, very important. But I think we put it somewhat on a performance base. Mm-hmm. Like we, uh, we read our chapter for the day. We said a little 10 minute prayer. Now we're, we're good uh, for the day. We're, yeah, check that box. Check that box. Wait for, the, wait for tomorrow. Yep. But really, I want to do, even if it's just reading one verse a day and praying just a little prayer throughout the day, that just ten second prayers it, several times throughout the day. If I'm receiving it in my heart, it that that's the key. It all goes back to the heart. It, right. Anything we do, if our heart's not in it, it's for void. It's not right. the Lord ain't getting nothing out of it. No. We're not getting nothing out of it. If you're just praying just to check that box and your prayer is just kind of going through the motions of a prayer, like da 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 da. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, you know, all that stuff. And then you, you're the same way after as you were before. That didn't do nothing for you. Maybe maybe you do that for an hour, but it didn't get nothing. And you can spend ten minutes and travail after the Lord and truly, like maybe repent or whatever kind of prayer you want to do. Mm-hmm. Maybe you got a buddy that you're praying for that's going through a battle and you pour your heart out and cry and like, Lord, I need I need you to meet me here. I, I, I don't know, have no answers and I, I know you do. That's coming from Right. That's what he wants from us. That's all he wants from us, is to put our whole heart yeah. into what we're really wanting. The, because I, he knows he knows our heart. He knows what we want yeah. deep down inside well, of us. Well, the Bible says he'll give us the desires of our heart. Right. I texted Larry this today. I said, the Lord will give us the desires of our heart once our di- desires become for him. Right. That's the desire that he's talking about. My dad has preached about it. When we start wanting godly things, when we start wanting to be holy, when we start striving for him, when we're like Peter and we're looking towards him in the storm and we're going towards him, regardless of how we feel, then the Lord's going to start giving us some things. Right. And he's not going to give us money to, 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 to supply our need. He's not going to give us health just for our, our need. He's going to, everything is for his glory. Right. If he gives you money, it's going to be to lift him up somehow, somehow some way. Right. Everything he's going to give you, it's going to be to pour back into him and his and, kingdom. And, yeah, into the kingdom. Right. Everything we do is for the kingdom. I want to read one one little passage that I wasn't even going to, but I read it today and it spoke to me. I texted a couple people, but it goes right along with what we're talking about. It's Isaiah 35, the whole entire chapter, which is very, it's 10 verses. It starts off by saying, and this is the New Living Translation. And the, the little title, subtitle says, Hope for Restoration. Even the wilderness and desert will be glad in those days. The wasteland will rejoice and blossom with spring prophecies. Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. The deserts will become as green as the mountains of Lebanon, as lovely as Mount Carmel or the plain of Sharon. There the Lord will display his glory, the splendor of our God. With this news, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear. For your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap like a deer, and those who cannot speak will sing for joy. Springs will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams will water the wasteland. The parched ground will become a pool, and springs of water will satisfy the thirst land. Marsh grass and reeds and rushes will flourish, where desert jackals once lived, and a great road will go through that once deserted land. It will be named the Highway of Holiness. Evil-minded people will never travel on it. It will be only for those who walk in God's ways. Fools will never walk there. Lions will not lurk along its course, nor any other ferocious beasts. There will be no longer, no other dangers. Only the redeemed will walk on it. Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. And what I took out of that is pretty much what I just was telling y'all. 
you know, you're talking about seasons and stuff. We all have our wildernesses, our deserts. We don't feel no springs rising up in us. The Bible says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Right. Sometimes we don't feel like we have any water in us. We're, we're dry. Mm-hmm. We're in a desert place. You know, we're there because the Lord wanted us there, but we don't feel nothing. We're not, you know, we're like, Lord, we want some water here. We're dying of thirst. Dad was just preaching on it. But that verse, right, them verses speak that the Lord's not going to bring you out of the wilderness, but you're in the wilderness for a reason. And he's going to start letting springs flow up in that wilderness. There's going to start being life there. Grasses are going to grow. Animals are coming back. And the thing is, and he said there's going to be a road go through it called the Highway of Holiness. And holiness, you can get into a lot of different things. Yeah. That goes on into how we dress, our heart, our mind, mm-hmm. what we listen to, what we're watching. Separation from right. worldliness and godliness. That's a whole new thing. But in a, in a nutshell, we all know what holiness is. It's about being holy, trying to strive towards Jesus and godly mm-hmm. things. And I believe, he said that the highway of holiness will run through it. When I read that, I pictured it as I may have been going through a tough time. But the Lord is going to give me a road. And it's like we're driving in the same vehicle with the Lord beside me. He's saying, hey, look out there. That used to be a dry wasteland. Now look what it is. Hey, look out there. You remember when you were going through this trial? I brought you out of it. And that's who I, that's who I put in your path. And look at them now. Right. Hey, you see that over there? That used to be dead. Now it's a prodigal that's returned. All because you answered my prayer and you did what I was supposed to do. You know, he's, it's like me and him are walking through my life and he's telling me, hey, you did this and you did that. Right. It's lifting my spirits and giving me joy. But the avenue for which that happens is holiness. Right. You know, it wasn't called the, just a highway. It was the highway of holiness. Right. So I feel like if you're not being holy, the Lord's not going to, and it says blind eyes are going to be open, and we think physically. But I feel like if you're not going to try to be holy, then you're going to be blind to the things the Lord has done for you. Right. If you're striving for the Lord and you're keeping on praying when you don't feel like it, you keep on doing these things with a good heart, good intention, the Lord's going to start letting you know, hey, it's okay. You're going through it right now, but right. you remember that one time I changed your life when you did this. Right. Hey, I helped you quit smoking back then this time. Hey, I brought your brother to church. Hey, I did this for you. I did. It's like if we're, if we're doing what we want to do, we don't even think about that stuff. We don't. But right. when we start doing what God wants us to do, he starts opening it all up. And I'm like, I've talked about it a while back when I led service. I remember if you kind of calm down sometimes in prayer and just meditate just and think on these things, the Lord's like, he'll reveal stuff to you, like stuff you forgot even happened. Right. Like when I was little, me and my brother standing up late talking about the Lord. With I mean, so, so strongly that we were crying. Little, little kids, but we were sincere. Right. My brother getting baptized in our pool in our backyard because he come to a realization that I don't even want to wait till we come to church again. I, don't, I might not have tomorrow. That was a good moment in my life. We all have them moments. We do. But we lose track of them. But when we try to be holy, when we're going through the wildernesses, but we're still praying, mm-hmm. when we're going through like Daniel did in the lion's den, he kept praying no matter right. what the law said, no matter what it is. Job kept on doing what God wanted him to do. Right. David kept on pressing through. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Right. There's so many different instances. But if we keep doing them things, our eyes will be open to the blessings. And the Lord's going to mm. go with us. He's going to go with us through our lives and, and say, hey, I did this for you. I did that for you. And before you know it, Your there's faith new, there's new things happening. Yeah. Yep. Springs are rising up. Right. And I think it's a good thing for us to see that because that's what gets us back on the track to where he wants us to be. Right. Instead of looking at all the bad that's in your life, you need to take a step back and look at all the good things that you did because yeah. that's what gets you back on track. Yeah. You, may not I, be, you may not be where you're going to be, but you're sure not where you used where to be. Where you used to be, right. And we can rejoice in that. We can. We can. Because at any given time, man, we we could have just said, forget it, and stepped away. And then God, the Holy Ghost won't let you do that. Right. It'll check you. It, w- it will. Yeah, if you're, if you're doing fleshly things and, and doing things that you know ain't right, you you know. Right. The Lord, that's the thing about the Holy Ghost is if he's living inside of you, he's like, hey, you don't need to do that. Mm-mm. And we know it. You can fight it. And you can even tell people, hey, 
and when you're getting into dress, people really do it because they want to blend in with the world. But when you start talking about them things, you can be like, hey, I don't think that's wrong. But in your heart, you're like, you know the Lord's telling you. Oh, yeah. You should don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. So it don't matter what you think. When you tell people, you can look on the outside, hey, uh, say, I, I can do this. It's okay. The Bible doesn't say nothing against it. It's all right. But in your heart, the Lord's telling you, please don't do it. Please don't mm-hmm. do it. If you do it, that's a sin against God. Because I've gotten in conversations at work knowing that I shouldn't have gotten in conversations. Knowing, you know, God's like, man, yeah, just keep on walking. Just keep on walking. But I didn't. I made that choice, which it was my own choice. But then after I left that conversation, I'm like, instant. Like, the Holy Ghost is like, I told you. Like, why do we got to go through this every time? It's like a cycle. It's like yeah. a cycle. But once you break that cycle, when you break that cycle of falling into them temptations, that's when God really starts working in you. That's when God's like, okay, I got you. Now you're right where I need you to be. When you walk up on a conversation that ain't right and you can walk on and not indulge in it, that's when you know you're on the track where God wants you to be. And if we fall, like say you did it one time, we ought to feel bad. We're disobedient uh, obedient to the Lord, Mm -hmm. and we're doing what we know we ain't right, ain't right. Right. Which means instead of beating ourselves up, which we've all talked about in the prayer room and stuff, we've all we've all done it. Right. We made a mistake and we beat ourselves up, and then we're like, I'm a nobody. Instead of that, that's what the devil wants you to do. Right. The Lord's telling you, hey, all you have to do is ask for forgiveness, and bam, it's gone. The Lord forgets about it. He throws it as far as the east is from the west, and then they're right. never coming back. And never. Then the next day, you're encountered with that same problem, mm-hmm. then you walk away from it. Right. Bam. That's what you're supposed to do. Yep. And if you fall again, repent again. Repent again. Don't ever give up. That's, that's the thing. We, we're going to fall and mess up. And we're going to disappoint ourselves. We're going to disappoint God. The Holy Ghost let you know if it's not true to people. Right. That's right. It, it, it all goes back to the heart. That's what we kind of keep going about to. If your heart's in it, you are, you're not going to give up. No. You know, if your heart's in something, you're going to come through with you're it. You're going to. And if, if, even if you fall or whatever, you're going to keep on going. But if your heart's in it, you'll repent with a sincere heart. Yep. That is what the Lord honors. And that's when he forgives and forgets. And also dying daily out to your flesh, taking out things that you really you really think you really care about, but when all in reality, you can live without them. Right. You know, crucifying your flesh. Like, okay, well, this week, I'm not going to watch no TV. I'm just going to take that time that I do watch TV. Exactly. I'm just going to put that in prayer, or I'm going to put that in my reading. Yeah. I'm, well, I read three chapters today. Instead of watching three hours of TV, I want you read another three, four, five, six chapters, indulge in it, you know, study on it, see what God's really trying to speak to you, you know. Instead of flipping on Instead that radio of, station yep. that you listen to for years and years yep. that gets you pumped up or whatever, flipping on some songs, right? pick you out a playlist. When they sing songs at church and you're like, man, that song just speaks to my heart, load it up on your playlist and get right. you one and listen to them songs and they take you to that place again. That's the thing. We, we sometimes lack feeling and we get stuck in ruts. But we all have things that can bring us back. For me, songs are a great thing. It is. There's certain songs that I can listen to that instantly, like me and the Lord just meet up. Boom. It takes me back to that. It's just me and you, Lord. Forget it's, about all the problems. You know, and it's like that song by Draylon Young, Unseen. Man, that's how I want to be, man. I don't want it to be me anymore. I want it to be all God that's shining through me. Yeah. I only want, he was talking about, Taking less of me, but putting in more of you. Like, that's what I want. That's, and that's what we should want from God, is to put more of him in us. You know, that's, that's all he wants anyway. He wants us to be just like him in all ways. You know, have that love and compassion, and, you know, for others like he had. You know. Y'all got any closing thoughts? Anything? And I would say, whatever you're going through, no matter what it is, if you think it's big or if you think it's little, man, just give it to God. Don't dwell on it too much. Don't beat yourself up on it. Because when you're beating yourself up on it, take it from me, you're going to fall into a deeper pit than what you will if you just say, Lord, I'm messing up. I know I'm messing up. I need you to step in and and just take over right now. I need you to lead me. You know, it's like Brother Tripp said, listen to a song or something that connects you with God. 
call a buddy you know, that is a good influence. So, right. Say, hey, I, I don't even know what to do. I, I just maybe pray over the phone with me. Or right. Give me an encouraging word. Or give me a verse that you like that lifts you up. I mean, so many things. There, the Lord gives us so many ways out if we'll just take them. If we'll just take them. And, right. it, and my closing thoughts that we want to do is you, you brought this all up and it, it's called Back to the Basics. That's what we got to get back to. But since we're, we're talking to these people, giving them our advice, the basics involve praying. And what I found when I'm giving Bible studies and helping young people and stuff, people don't know how to pray these days. People will literally tell me, hey, I, I don't know how to pray. I might have been in church my whole life, but I don't know how to pray. How many people listen whenever they have somebody at a dinner that is praying over the food, they just sit there and bow their head and let that person pray and listen. We listen to other people's prayers, but we need to pray. And if we're getting back to the basics, my advice to pray is the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. Mm-hmm. But talk, he's our father. Like, we forget that sometimes. He's, and the Bible says he's our Abba, which translated pretty much means he's our dad. That, that lovingness. You know, we think of father as our authority figure. He is. But he's our loving dad. Too, mm-hmm. that he cares about us and it's me and him having a conversation I talk to him I talk to him just like I talk to my dad sometimes I say sometimes I stutter sometimes I'll say something I don't mean but I do in real life too right. I'm just talking to him and it's through talking to him and, and then it's sometimes in the middle of prayer I'll be praying for a little while and then the Lord will just kind of tell me to be quiet and I'll listen to him because he talks back that's a whole other thing about our God Mm-hmm. Our God talks back to us. It's a two-way conversation. It ain't right. me praying and not hearing nothing. He talks back to me. And if you don't believe it, start reading your word. Because I'll, I'll start being quiet in prayer and the scriptures will just start popping in my oh, head. Yeah. Like crazy stuff. And it'll flow together and the Lord will give me this. He'll give me a vision of this. Stuff that I wasn't even thinking of. And it's just a two-way conversation. Prayer. Prayer changes things. He said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways. I will heal their land. Right. And our land needs healing. It our does. individual land and this country, this world, it needs healing. It does. And it's going to be through the avenue of prayer, which is no more basic. The basic everything is prayer. prayer. That's true. We're going to test that every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, before church. We're going to pray here in just a little while. Um, we ought to take time out every day to pray. But prayer, that's all I can say. Prayer changes things. You're in a wilderness, pray. You're going through a situation, pray. You're just not feeling the Lord for a little while, pray until you do. It, that's all that it is to it. I mean, Brother our situations David, aren't going to get better till we pray. Brother David just said Wednesday, it's better to you learn more in the valley than you learn about the That's right. Oh, for sure. That's why Absolutely. seasons are so important. The Lord will take you there for a reason. Yep. But you've got to pray and talk to him and say, Lord, what is that reason? And he'll tell right. you. And, man, it, and sometimes I'll go to prayer not even feeling the Lord. I'm talking having a bad day, going through this and going through that, and somebody tell me this, and it just gets me down. And I'll go in that prayer room right, right before church, and I just start praying, and I'm not feeling it, but I'm praying. And I'll start thanking him for this and thanking him for that, because in the end, we're blessed. We are. And through my thanksgiving and through my prayer, I'll start feeling the Lord a little more and a little more. And then before you know it, the Lord and me are just talking. And I'm talking in tongues. And the Lord's speaking through me. He's speaking to me. He's giving me visions. He's giving me words to say. Scriptures in my heart. And before you know it, I just feel like I'm on top of the mountain. Right. Even though I might still be in the valley. Yeah. You know, the song says, find me in the valley with my hands lifted high. Right. right. You know, I might be going through these problems, but I'm going to go through them praying. I'm going to go through them with my hands up. Right. Because... No matter what I go through, I'm blessed. Yeah, absolutely. I can think. Of, I can always think of something that is a blessing in my life. If I'm going oh, through absolutely. the biggest, darkest hell I've ever went through, I'm still blessed. My closing thoughts. It's more or less just want my personal experience. If you can take anything out of it, good. I can't. Uh, I look back. There's been times where I had nowhere to lay my head. Been in the ruts, real ruts, not like these little things I'm going through now that get me in a funk. But when I look at everything that I have, the last two years of my life, just immediate, as soon as I acknowledge God, it's like deliverance from addiction. It's faith is being born. And I come in this church and 
what I feel is something you can't feel anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And I look at my wife and I look at my boys and I look at <clears throat> everything that God's done in me. I'm a completely different person than how I used to be. And you got to remember that when you hit that funk, when you hit that rut, and you're just, you even question giving up sometimes. Mm-hmm. And then you got to just take a breath and look back and look at where you're at. Because there was not too long ago, I was all the way back here, looking all the way up here, but now I'm right here in the middle, and I'm looking back, and I'm looking forward, I still want to go there, but I'm looking at that because look how far he's brought me from, and that just kind of always makes me feel better, looking at the evidence. Yeah. There's been evidence of God my whole life, even when I refused to believe him, even when I refused to listen He's been evident my whole life. I don't. I should be in a jail cell or in a grave, but right. by God's grace and by His mercy, I'm here. And I can say today that I have. I'm grateful for a lot of things. But I'm grateful that for the Holy Ghost being number one. But one thing that God's given me that I am most thankful for is the chaos that I was used to. And then taking that away and giving me an inner peace that I've never experienced until I met the Lord. Right. The peace that He can give you inside, it takes away all pain, it takes away all hurt, and you can genuinely just love. Like, Brother Joe preaches all the time, it's a choice to love. Yep. That changed my life. I can look back at people that done me wrong in the past or that I did wrong, that I may still have bitterness towards. And I can honestly say this, I can look back at my past and choose to love everybody in it because of the peace that God's given me. Right. Because he chose to love me. He chose to forgive me. He chose to to keep me from death when I could have hit it. When I could have hit death head on, he decided to... He told death so we could live. Right. Mm-hmm. So, that's just my closing thoughts. Just always look at how far you've come. Like you were, were pretty much were saying the same things in different ways. The, whole yep. the message is the same. Look in your heart, look in yourself, and just believe that God's going to get you out of it. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you, no, I'm proud of y'all. I love what y'all's doing, and uh, I like being a part of it. This is the first time I've got to speak, and uh, which it's not, it's not y'all. Y'all been asking me. I just, I don't really want to be a big part of this. This is, this is y'all's and the Lord's, y'all's way of ministry, and uh, I'm looking forward to all the weeks to come, the people that are going to be on here, and the the ministries that are going to go right. forth, and the lives that are going to be changed for it. You know, it's nothing but faith. But uh, I appreciate it. I'm yeah. glad y'all had me on. I'm, I'm glad. You go and get a lot of get a lot out of it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's all, it's all go, it all goes back to the Lord. He gets the glory for it all. That's right. Uh, none of it is for us. You mm-hmm. know, if it ever is, then we are doing it for the wrong reasons. Absolutely. And uh, I appreciate everybody watching. I hope that this really is going to keep on touching lives. I believe it is. The Lord wouldn't have it doing it if it wasn't. I think so. And uh, the change is one. It's enough. That's right. So uh, I guess we're going to end up in this one. And what yep. we do, let me just uh, tell everybody that we're going to have another episode next week. My man, Brother Chance, has a message he's going to deliver to us and he's been working on. And then after that, we're going to hit certain subjects for a few weeks straight. Right. After about a, a tenth episode. We're going to start having guests come on, elders of the church, people we care about, learn from, come on and give a testimony or give a message. We're going to do more than just seeing our handsome faces every day. <laughs> um, there's going to be different people come on and you know, looking to just expand what we do on here. Right. And if you have any comments or you need prayer or Bible yeah. studies, whatever, just comment. And right. Let us let know. Us know. We'll be more than happy to do it. Thank you for y'all watching. God is good. God is great. All the time. God is good. Thanks for watching, everybody. Praise yeah, praise I'll go ahead and pray this out. Y'all pray with me, though. Lord, Lord we, we appreciate everything that you're doing in this place. Jesus. Thank you for Lord, what you're doing in our lives. You Thank you for what you're doing times. in this podcast. Lord, the lives that it's going to change. Every area of Thank you for the testimonies, God, God, that you've brought these us men good from. That we're doing in they're, our lives. You're using Lord, it to let them be overcome. The and and use their wrongs. testimonies to, but Lord, to show push us them in the right direction and to help your ministry. Lord, I pray, God, that your will be done in everything, every word that's said. I pray we continue to be anointed and we continue to pray. 
Lord, let us continue to stay in the basics. Sword. Don't let us ever get overwhelmed. Don't let us ever be in the wilderness and feel like we're all alone because you're always with us. God, I'm believing for greater things and greater things beyond that. We're going to continue to praise you. We're going to continue to worship you. Even if I'm in the valley, find me with my hands lifted high. You get all the glory and praise, God. And until next time, we love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.